Lauren here from the Thinking Closet. As you can see, I'm in my painting clothes and apparently my painting braids. And today's an exciting day because we have a DIY project underway and I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride. And just to catch you guys up to speed, Mark and I are in the process of building our very own custom king size bed, frame and headboard. And this is, feels like a really big deal to us because we're finally becoming adults and getting our own bed frame. It's true, we've only had a box spring and mattress up until this point. Slightly embarrassing. But it's exciting because now we're actually at a point in our lives when we really care about design and DIY and are eager to create something that we will love and hopefully have for a long time. So to let you guys know where we're at in the process, so far Mark has already designed the structure of the bed. He has gone to Home Depot and purchased all of the supplies we need from the hardware, tools, to the actual wood itself. We have harvested pallet wood from pallets for the headboard, cut all the boards that we need for the bed frame, um, drilled, sanded, it's all ready to go except we need to stain these boards. And I was not looking forward to the process of staining the old-fashioned way, because I knew it would take forever. Extra credit points if you know what movie that's from. So, I actually contacted HomeRight, who was a company that I had met at Haven Blog Conference, because I remembered learning about one of their products that I thought might come in handy. And I thought, let me see if I can try this out and share it with my readers. Um, so this product that I'm getting to try out today is called the Finish Max Fine Finish Sprayer. And new in the box, I haven't even opened it yet, but I've heard great things about it. Apparently it really speeds up your staining and painting time, um, just gives you an even coated finish. But I, I need to see for myself. So. This is going to be our right-hand man today as we dive into staining. I'm going to now open the box, read the instructions so that uh, we actually know what we're doing, and then I'll be back in a few with the next steps in the process. All right, see you in a few. All right, so I have opened the box. I wanted to show you guys what was inside. We have the sprayer itself already assembled. How cool is that? And I'll show you in a moment how this puppy works. Um, also inside, learned a new word, a viscosity cup. This will help us determine whether or not we need to thin out the paint or the stain. Fancy. This is an air blow nozzle, not for paint, but for air. If you ever wanted to like clean out your computer keys, you can use the sprayer just to blow that air through and get rid of all the dust, which I thought was neat. And lastly, a cleaning brush for that final step of like cleaning your sprayer when you're all done. Um, so I studied the manual a bit and feel like we're ready to get started, dive in. Before we do though, I wanted to show you guys the stain that we're gonna be using today. This is Verithane brand wood stain and it's in sun bleach color. And Mark and I were really excited about it because we thought the sun bleached look would match our sort of coastal beachy vibe we have going on in our master bedroom. Also, this claims that it can dry in one hour and that it can achieve the color that you want in only one coat. So we'll see how it does with our sprayer. Also, some things that you'll want to have on hand are a train for sound effects, <laughs> um, also a paint stirrer, a paint brush and maybe little q-tips to catch drips as you go, um, rags for cleaning, uh, safety glasses because we always want to protect the eyes, gloves to protect your skin, um, a face mask. I've heard that you can use a respirator but that it's not necessary there's not going to be too much overspray to worry about so i'd say unless you're an asthmatic this should should suffice and then of course a just a, a little bucket of water just to be safe in case we have any spills so next up we're going to test the viscosity of our stain sat word and see if we need to thin it out any i anticipate we won't but let's see 
and then we'll dive into staining itself. Whoop, whoop. So here we are. Um, I've been mixing this stain now for probably a good 10 minutes. A lot of it had uh, gathered on the bottom and really needed a good, good stir. So now it looks about ready. Um, just make sure whatever paint or stain you're using, just to read the actual label. Um, it'll just give you instructions on paint or stain drying time and usage, how you know, if you're gonna thin it, sometimes it'll say what to do. Now, upon reading the instructions here, it says that there is no thinning required for clear sealer, polyurethane, or stain. But just so you would see how it would work, um, you would dip your viscosity uh, cup right in here in the stain and lift it up. And then there's a little chart here and it says, you know, if it takes it should take 25 to 40 seconds to spill out if it's enam enamel, 30 to 45 if it's primer, and so on. So just make sure to test that out um, using your manual, page 7, um, to test the viscosity. And then it'll give you instructions on how to thin. I'm actually going to use this viscosity cup to transfer the stain from the can into the container. So obviously there'll be a little bit of spillage because of that hole but I think it's a lot less than if I were to try to pour one into the other. So whether you have a funnel or maybe a ladle to help with this step, if not, you can use your trusty dusty viscosity cup. So I'm gonna fill this up about maybe halfway. See how we do there. And it looks like I have about half a can left. I want to show you guys real quick um, the nozzle here. So depending on the position of your nozzle, you will get a different spray type stream. So if you have your nozzle in this vertical position, you'll actually get a horizontal spray. So it will spread out horizontally. If you switch the nozzle to the horizontal position, you'll get a vertical spray, which is what I'm going to try first. And then if you do it at the diagonal, you'll get sort of a mix of both. So what they recommend is trying all the different nozzle positions to see what works best for your project. Also, you'll notice um, the tube here that draws the paint up into the sprayer, um, it can have two different positions. So it can go to the backwards position and you would want that if you were spraying a ceiling so that it could easily grab the paint but since we're gonna be spraying upright as well as down, I want this nozzle facing forward. So I have my nozzle facing forward and I'm going to dip it in here and screw this on and we'll get started. So now that my container is secured to my sprayer, um, I did wanna add another way to adjust the flow of the paint is through this volume knob here on the back. So it's hard to see, but there's a little tiny knob here that says max and min. So that has to do with how much volume of paint is being sprayed out at any one time. So depending on the scope of your project, you might want a higher volume or a lower volume. Just play around. I'm going to do a test run first on a, on a scrap piece of wood to see what's going to work best for this particular project. Also, the great thing about this is it's an airless sprayer. So I don't need a special compressor. All I need is an extension cord or an outlet, and I could just plug and play. So let's go play. All right, so I've been practicing with the sprayer for maybe about 30 minutes now, and I think I'm getting the hang of it. Um, Good idea to practice on some scrap wood. I've been adjusting my volume, learning that less volume works better for this stain and for this project. So I've really turned the volume down. 
Um, my nozzle is at a horizontal position so that the spraying is vertical and I'm just running it straight down those boards. Sometimes if, it's, if it looks like I got a little too close, I'll just run the paintbrush over it to catch the drips, but for the most part, um, don't even need to do that. So just four to 12 inches away is what the instructions say, and I'm doing it at about 12 inches away. So let me show you how it's done. That one was thin enough, I don't even need to use a paintbrush. Let me see if I can give you a closer look. Now I'm doing the board that is lying flat. The one next to it is just propping it up. But you see it's got like that whitewashed look, sun bleached look that we're going for. It's gonna match our IKEA hacked wardrobe really well. So I'm gonna keep on working. Feel free to stick around and watch. Grab a lemonade or something. All right, well, it took me about an hour, but I am done staining these boards. And I don't have any back pain, any aches and pains from bending over and using a paintbrush and a rag all afternoon. So this Home Right sprayer is my new best friend. And you can see here, all of our boards are, have that nice sun bleached look to them. We're ready to put the bed together. And I'm just so excited to have an actual bed frame now that we built and we stained together. So now whew, it's everybody's favorite time, cleanup time for the sprayer and then for me. Right, so cleanup time. I have on longer gloves this time because in order to clean up oil-based paints, you need mineral spirits. You just wanna make sure to protect the skin. Um, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your sprayer is disconnected from your power source. Um, then you can unscrew the container and we're going to pour in any excess, we have a little bit of excess stain, I'm gonna pour it back into the original can of stain so we can use it again next time. And just to give you guys a sense, it looks like we used about three-fourths of the quart of stain to cover all of the exterior boards, any surface that would be seen on our bed. So pretty good. I'm sure we used a lot less than uh, if I'd been doing this by hand. I have my mineral spirits here. It says on the instructions to fill the container halfway with these mineral spirits. I'm going to screw it back on to my sprayer. Then I'm going to plug it back in. You see where this is going? I'm going to run these mineral spirits through the sprayer until it runs clear. Probably about a few minutes. Made sure I got that good and shaken up so we can clean. 
clear all the paint out of there. I feel like all the paint should have gone through, or I mean all the mineral spirits should have gone through. Now the next step is I'm going to pour this down the drain rather than just outside. And then I'm going to put any of these extra pieces like this tube, the container, in a bucket full of mineral spirits that will get them good and clean. So I'll be back. So now I have my bucket full of mineral spirits. Actually, it's more like half mineral spirits, half water. And I've already dropped in the touch-up brush I used, my container, all the little pieces, and already they're getting super clean. So mineral spirits does the trick. I'm going to add my little tube that I just pulled off from here very easily. Now, the next steps are to unscrew this nozzle very carefully. And I'm gonna drop in all these little pieces because look, they're covered in stain. So, carefully drop these all in. They all kind of come out there. And I'm even gonna unscrew this, this part. Um, just so I can get it good and clean. And then that's why I have that brush, so I can go on in here with some mineral spirits and clean out all that paint. So let me go do this. You don't need to watch me clean, but this gives you an idea um, so you can do it on your own. All right, it's been fun. Thanks for joining me. And I uh, can't wait to show you the reveal, final reveal of our bed once it's all finished. All right, see you on the blog. I'm not a lefty. Yada yada. Don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Airplane. Pippi long stocking. Bugs. Almost forgot my gloves. Ha! <laughs> nah. We prepped the stain. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that again.